Hello, and welcome back to Adapec Energy Dialogues. Adapec Energy Dialogues is a series of conversations with industry-leading analysts, uh, market participants on the most pressing topics of the day facing the oil and gas industry. And uh, this uh, series today uh, uh, with a focus on the impact of digital innovation on the oil and gas industry. And I'm very delighted to be joined today by uh, Tarek Risk, who is the uh, president for Middle East and North Africa for Schlumberger, one of the world's largest engineering uh, businesses uh, today face, uh, serving the oil and gas industry. Tarek, welcome to Adapec Energy Dialogues. Thank you, Jeffrey. I'm very happy to be here. Now, you took on this uh, this new role uh, uh, just in, in July of this year. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your strategy and uh, your vision for the, uh, the Middle East and North Africa region? Sure. Uh, you know, Jeffrey, I'm, I'm actually, before we start, I'm very happy to be back in the Middle East. Uh, this is home for me uh, and where I started my career in the oil and gas industry. And also the Middle East, as you know, holds close to 50% of the world oil reserves uh, and today provides more than a third of the required global demand. So I would say if there's a center of gravity for our industry, uh, then it's here in the Middle East. So it's really great to be back. And Schlumberger has been part of the oil and gas industry here in the region for more than 90 years. Uh, we've been part of the history, the fabric uh, of the industry in the region. Uh, and I'm really proud to, to say that uh, we are as much a regional company as we are a multinational one. And coincidentally, we are actually this year celebrating 70 years in the UAE, United Arab Emirates, with our first wireline log that was done in 1950. So we have a great history here, and, and I'm really proud to be back and, and leading um, the Schlumberger team in the Middle East uh, and North Africa. Now, back to your question, my vision and ambition for Schlumberger is, is quite simple. I really hope that we remain the performance partner of choice for our customers, with the customers at the center of everything we do. And I believe this ambition can be achieved uh, by several commitments. First, um, continue the focus on adding value to the local communities where we live and work. Schlumberger has a long history of social stewardship in the Middle East. Uh, and as a regional manager, this will be a key part of my job. Here, uh, we're committed to local talent development and also in-country value addition through local manufacturing, uh, developing local partners in all parts of the value chain. And one of our long-standing policies is that we hire from where we work. You know, building local talents uh, makes us stronger as a partner in the region. And I hope we can take this to the next level in the coming years. When it comes to local manufacturing and developing local partners, we have many projects in the pipeline across the region, and there'll be a big acceleration on this front uh, in the coming years. Secondly, I would say enhancing our customer focus is going to be also a key uh, part of my vision and strategy in the Middle East. Uh, the challenges in our region and actually in our industry are many, many as you know, and staying close to our customers, understanding the challenges and investing in technologies that are fit for basin or fit for purpose and solutions will be a central focus for MENA team and myself. So in summary, we want to add visible value where we work and continue to provide regionalized solutions that will help our customers succeed in the future. You mentioned that there are a number of headwinds and challenges facing the oil and gas industry. And uh, uh, these uh, show up in terms like reduction in operating expenditure targets, reduction in CapEx. Uh, how do you see the customers in the uh, Middle East and North Africa region adjusting their strategic focus in light of these, these uh, strong fiscal pressures on the industry? You know, uh, Jeffrey, 2020 was a, a very interesting year, to say the least. We saw uh, unprecedented and steep declines in operator spend, obviously, as the pandemic hit the world and the global demand dropped off significantly. Uh, sometimes I wonder if it's actually what's happening is real, you know, when you, uh, when, you, uh, when you wake up and realize what really has happened over the year, and not just for our industry, but uh, on the global stage. This, of course, you know, added tremendous pressure on the entire industry and, and, and it, it has been obviously, we all had to be very flexible and agile as, as we move forward. But I think it's important also to, to note that uh, capital efficiency, uh, controlling OPEX and CAPEX uh, has been a theme and focus area in the oil and gas industry for, for the last five and six years. I think this has been essential 
to stay competitive uh, and to stay relevant in the industry. So I feel that yes, there has been a strong decline, um, very specific to 2020. But overall, the the team and the and the the fact that we are becoming more disciplined as an industry in terms of spend has been with us for uh, for some time now. And in Chamberger, we have increased our focus on providing our customers with capital efficient technologies solutions to meet their development goals. And also it's important to note that in the Middle East region, our customers have long-term plans that are aligned with interests, national interests. Uh, so in reality, a lot of the major projects that we've seen uh, delayed in, in 2020 have not really been canceled, but more, I would say, shifted uh, or delayed, uh, moved to the right really. But, but you're right to say that there has been some change and shift in focus. And if I would summarize this, I would say uh, the, key, uh, the key thing that we see here in the Middle East is renewed focus on maximizing production from existing brownfields. Uh, this of course reduces capital risk. Uh, it shortens the investment cycle. Uh, and, and we see that there's a very um, obvious shift towards uh, the production optimization space in existing fields. I would also say that as uh, our, uh, our customers look at uh, controlling and, and maintaining their, uh, you know, their budgets, there is, there's also a direction moving towards technologies and new business models uh, that are geared towards uh, production optimization. I think this will continue to gain momentum in the coming years. So basically, I think in the Middle East region, we are, we are all ready and waiting for a strong comeback that will hopefully come in the near future. One of the uh, key topics of the industry over the last uh, little while has been this term uh, integration. And, you know, it, it sounds a bit like a buzzword, but for uh, many companies uh, in oil and gas, it has real meaning uh, and has been seen as a critical element of success. Is integration still a critical uh, variable for the, uh, for the industry today? And, and if so, uh, why do you see that? And, and then if not, wh wh where does integration lie now in, the, in terms of the strategic agenda? You know, Jeffrey, uh, integrated projects, uh, or maybe what we would call in the well construction world, the uh, LSTK business model, lump sum turnkey, uh, has been an overall success in the region. We saw it taking off several years back and, and it's still continuing to gain uh, momentum. And personally, I see that the model will continue to expand in the future because the real advantage of integrated models is that it helps align the overall project objectives with commercial models and it promotes the one team spirit between the different stakeholders. So we see a good drive in terms of operational efficiency. We see that um, the integrated models uh, help uh, control project cost overruns and they're also a, a, a very interesting, um, uh, let's say, conduit to new technologies uh, that help develop and improve uh, efficiency uh, overall. So personally, I see that uh, it has been a success in the Middle East uh, and North Africa, and, and I do believe that we will see it gaining momentum. But there's also another opportunity that's starting to develop in line with what I mentioned in terms of strategic shift on production optimization. I believe that um, we will start to see the integration model moving towards the production space. And I think with all the learnings that we've gained over the past years as operators and as service companies uh, in the integrated model, I think we will be able to apply this similar integrated approach towards the production space uh, and help us continue um, in the quest to, to reduce our overall uh, capital expenditure and improve efficiency. And, and you know, to close here, the, the key of success to these models is really collaboration alignment on the outcome uh, and focus on the value proposition and cost saving and not just the unit price uh, as they would say. So this is really where I see the integration space moving. Uh, now I wonder if you could elaborate a little bit further uh, integration in terms of production. How, how, do you, how do you see that? What does that mean exactly? You know, when I say it, today, a lot of our integration models have been towards the well construction space, uh, but we're seeing a great opportunity now in terms of, you know, when, when you're in the production phase or let's say the workover phase, you're running a lot of services as well. So a similar outcome based model, uh, which is linked to production and or productivity uh, could be similarly applied towards the well construction. So this is where I see now that we, we can have a, a, an interesting shift uh, using this integrated model concept uh, and moving it down further in the value chain towards the production space or the workover space. 
You know, there's considerable interest, I think, in this topic uh, globally because of the sheer number, as you mentioned earlier, the sheer number of brownfield facilities and the need to keep these brownfield facilities still productive uh, in a time of short capital. Uh, I think this is the critical element here. Uh, but this also raises this other question about the role of newer technologies. How do these newer technologies, digital technologies, for example, uh, play a role in helping your customers uh, exploit their reserves fully and, and achieve the maximum potential from their brownfields? Perhaps you could uh, elaborate on that for me. Sure. You know, technology in general in the oil and gas uh, and specifically in the Middle East has been really a critical, critical component of success. The assets and reserves uh, in the Middle East are always managed, you know, with an eye on the future. Uh, as you know, uh, production efficiency and longevity uh, of the resources requires, do, do, you know, deep domain understanding mm. and close monitoring. Uh, this means the best in class measurements. Um, it means that we need to understand the technical challenge and make sure that we apply the right technologies at the right time uh, to ensure that we are basically maximizing the production and really reducing the amount of oil left in place. You know, in some, in some fields, we have uh, residual oil that's more than 30, 40%. So imagine we are, you know, we find the reserves, but we're leaving behind. And this is due to technical limitations. And, 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 uh, and I think when we focus our, uh, our approach in, on using technologies toward reducing this residual oil and uh, really improving the productivity, I think you can almost say that this is additional uh, production with a minimal capex, let's say, or minimum investment. So I'm, I'm convinced that technologies in general and not just digital will, will continue to play a central role uh, towards improving the productivity overall. And, and, and this is really where we are focused with our partners, with our uh, customers on working towards this, uh, let's say productivity or uh, reservoir optimization. Uh, now, when you come to the digital side, you know, it, we've always been, and Schlumberger and, and our partners, we've been using uh, digital models and, and simulations in general to characterize the reservoir. But where I see the next step coming is going to be towards uh, automation and um, let's say industrializing the digital concepts so that we can use the data and use machine learning, artificial intelligence to give us insights. And in some cases, even take the decisions because today, we have a lot of data in the industry, uh, but the data is generally not connected. And once you can connect all these data, you can make the decisions a lot faster. You can give a lot of control back to the operator or back to our employees, whether it's on the service side or the operator side, uh, to make the right decisions, but also at the right time. And, and I think this will help us in terms of efficiency and also in terms of um, capital or cost control. So I see that in, in, the, in the coming period, we're going to have uh, a lot of renewed interest in technologies that are geared towards production optimization. And this will be combined with the digital approach to ensure that we're doing this as efficiently and as effectively as uh, possible. So if digital innovations are having this effect, uh, or at least this potential effect on, on production, let's apply them now to capital. How do you see digital innovations having an impact on the uh, your first point about capital efficiency and in, in the application of capital in industry? Are these, are these technologies having a similar effect? You know, one thing, Jeffrey, that was quite interesting, I, 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 I was reading recently that um, although the, the digital transformation in the oil and gas industry has been, has been uh, a key word, I, I think there's been a lot of investment, but if you look at the value capture compared to other, um, um, other sectors or industry, if you say tourism or uh, real estate or, or retail, we come really low on the, on the value capture um, um, side. And, for me, I see this as a huge opportunity. I think there has been a lot of investment, a lot of um, a lot of focus towards this from from the entire sector. But I think the value uh, or the opportunity is going to be tremendous in the coming years. So the way I see, you know, the digital innovation centering around two connected parts: the data and the hardware. Uh, data is a key asset with tremendous value, and with the shift to the cloud and uh, the, the readily available increasing computing power, uh, these data platforms will allow organizations to unlock this value of data. Today, we have the data, but I'm not confident we're unlocking the, the full value uh, of it. So being able to have actionable insights by connecting the interpreted data uh, to the right part of the organization will give customers a new level of control. 
and provides a platform of, for increasing operational efficiency. A great example of data platform is the Egypt Upstream Gateway uh, that will be launched in December. This will be a unique and innovative platform for digitizing subsurface information to ensure that Egypt's subsurface data is kept evergreen. The second part is digitizing uh, the hardware. Uh, digitally enabling, for example, downhole drilling tools or al allows for actionable data to be sent to the driller in real time to allow for control of the drilling operations and to ensure it's being performed safely and efficiently. In some um, cases, uh, some of these decisions can be made on the edge, as I mentioned, and, and actually with the applications of machine learning and artificial intelligence, you might not even need the human intervention. And this will obviously improve efficiency and hopefully improve also productivity. So this is where I see, uh, I see the, the, the direction of unlocking the potential of data and digitizing the hardware and using the applications and the computing power available to really close the loop and, uh, and move towards what you mentioned uh, in the beginning of the question. The uh, pandemic environment has uh, given a, a, certainly in North America, a huge boost to the adoption of change. Uh, how do you see the pandemic uh, impacting the uh, client base uh, in the uh, Middle East and North Africa region? Is the, is the pandemic also giving a, a boost to the introduction of, uh, of changes? Definitely. I mean, uh, a, a good example is we are today having this interview, you know, in the Middle East, we're having it uh, on Zoom and probably we would have been doing it physically. Uh, but there's no doubt, there's no doubt that the pandemic has accelerated the adoption of digital technologies. Um, we've all witnessed this rapid increase, you know, video conferencing uh, are one of the applications now, all the, all the meetings, I mean, we've been able to meet and connect with our customers, even with our crews on the rigs, uh, you know, using these technologies, so definitely. Uh, another thing I mentioned uh, earlier, remote operations, today 60% of our grilling operations in the Middle East are run using remote operations, right? This is I don't think we would have been able to move that quickly, to be honest, without the pandemic. So if there is a positive part, I would say is the acceleration of uh, using digital technologies to provide remote operations. I think there will be uh, a big increase in, in digitizing the hardware and, and moving towards that direction much faster because we want to do our operations safely and the pandemic is restricting a lot of movements, whether it's related to maintenance or even operating some of the equipment uh, on sites. So. So we've seen, you know, how the industry has increased the adoption of, of, of all these technologies in the Middle East. And, uh, and I think this is actually uh, something that will continue. And I hope that this uh, propelled effort will continue even post the pandemic, because I think we're seeing the benefits uh, very clearly today. Uh, and it's important also to highlight how quickly we were able to react to changes around us by rewriting some of the relevant standards and sharing these with our customers. Uh, while working with them to ensure business continuity. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually uh, quite, uh, you know, when you look at the oil and gas industry, see how we're, how agile we are able to deal with this and, and to be able to, you know, sustain the operation here. Um, I think our operators have been really uh, providing a lot, of, uh, a lot of support, a lot of help to make sure that, uh, that we continue. And if you look, I don't even recall any major interruptions in the region. Uh, across the board because of the pandemic. And I think without digital technologies, uh, this would have been a much greater challenge. Well, certainly the, the preparation of the industry and its resilience has been brought to the fore here. And clearly Schlumberger is playing a critical role in that regard. Yes, yes, and, so and, and we, we're happy to have been working with our, with our customers. They provided us you know, excellent support during this, uh, this tough period for movement of people, for the deployment of new technologies. And I think it has been, um, it has, it has been great to work hand in hand uh, with our partners here and our customers to, to overcome this challenge. And the oil and gas industry is very good, very good at that. I think uh, the challenges and, and, and that we've been through uh, historically have been, uh, have been quite big, but uh, it's an amazing industry the, in terms of technology, in terms of resilience. Uh, and I think in terms of importance of what we do for the for the whole world, so I'm I'm really glad that we we were able to work through this together. 
Uh, Tarek, thank you very much for coming on Energy Dialogues today. It's been a, a great to hear about your uh, uh, purpose and vision for the industry in the Middle East. Uh, thank you again. Thank you, Jeffrey. It was a pleasure. Thank you. This has been another episode of Adepec Energy Dialogues, and please tune in again shortly for the release of another episode. Bye for now.